instead of rainfall it might be your snowfall or your uh, hail which we call asina hail so that can also be uh, observed so that one is known as a precipitation so that way by the process of condensation and precipitation again water is collected and it uh, reaches the ground water and other water bodies and again by evaporation and transpiration the process cycle continues so this one is known as a water cycle now as a, as we have discussed how is cloud formed so usually by evaporation and transpiration water is collected now that collected water vapor uh, combines to form water droplets so slowly and slowly they combine with dust particles and they form water droplets now this water droplets uh, when it combines in a large scale that's how your cloud is formed so once your cloud is formed uh, if it's if your cloud is very much heavier uh, that the cloud usually it flows in the sky so if the cloud becomes heavier due to the presence of water droplet they will be um, falling as your rain now next we need we will be discussing is rain so rain we all have observed rain during the monsoon season so that time uh, you see you see all the areas around you will become very much wet and during that time also you uh, during the summer period only you observe the monsoon season so uh, you might be feeling a very hot and very hot day that time because of the rain everything around us will be much cooler now this uh, rain so during sometimes also during the winter we do have some uh, we do have rainfall that time not only rain we have fog also fog is just uh, fog as we all know we in nepali call it dhumba so what usually happens um, during the fog there is a white mist of cloud everywhere it's not uh, it's, it's it's just like a mini cloud so you have seen cloud in the sky so that thing you will be observing it on the ground so that so because of the fog it will be um, very much difficult to see what's coming towards you so it affects our visibility and in big big cities when this fog mixes with smoke it forms smog now we need to see what happens when there are excessive rainfall when due to excessive rainfall it might cause flood and because of flood not only all the properties and animals but also human beings human being lives are affected so as you can see here in the diagram uh, a flood is affecting a house so flood is due to the excessive rainfall uh, so so for flood damages all the properties and all and it will also lead to soil erosion this is due to excessive rain now another one is drought which is due to no rain so usually what happens in drought there is no rainfall in a particular area for a very long period of time and because of that all the water of that area is completely uh, finished so you see uh, due to continuous evaporation and transpiration from plants and all all the water present in the surface as well as the ground water are uh, or are evaporated and you find that in that area water becomes very scare scare so because of that there is no water present out there and you see the soil will be something like this you see observe the area affected will be affected with drought will be something like this where there is no rainfall for a long period of time so because of this you cannot go any plants out here and it will also affect the human health now we need to see how can we conserve water in order to protect our places from drought there are some methods used to conserve water this is known as a technique which is known as conservation of water so basic thing which you can do is fix the leakage of water from tips and pipes so to avoid water wastage so this thing we need to do if your water is leaking from any portion of your houses make sure you fix that area while brushing your teeth and all make sure that if you are cleaning don't let the tap go running not only during the time of brushing your teeth washing your clothes but in other purposes also don't let the tap run off then reuse water whenever possible so you can re re reuse water for example if you are 
for instance, if you are washing your uh, face, uh, or you can say if you are if you are washing some vegetables, if you are washing some vegetables, the water which you uh, with, with with which you wash the vegetable, instead of throwing, you can uh, you can throw those water, or you can what you can use this water in order to water the flowering plants. So that's how you conserve water. Then use of bucket and mug instead of shower bath. So this is the best way we can conserve water. Instead of using showers, we we can if you use buckets and water, there we'll be able to conserve water. And still you have some so many techniques out here with the help of which we can conserve water. Now one of the on another very much used technique is your rainwater harvesting. So here two types of rainwater harvesting are given: surface runoff harvesting and rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting. So usually in urban areas what they do during the uh, rainy season they make drains uh, those those drains they run they run towards the ground so that means those all those rainwaters are through drain through drain pipes and all those are collected and those are kept on in uh, those are collected under ground so that's how we collect uh, so that's how we increase the amount of groundwater level next one is rooftop harvesting so how it does during the as you can see in the diagram so during the monsoon season water is collected through drain pipes and we have a pit out there below the ground a tank where we store water and those stored water can be used for various purposes for agriculture and maybe for other substances those water can be used so with this we complete the chapter and i want the students to do Select the correct option. And they can try this question answer. Question number 7. They should be able to do this. With this we end. Thank you.